Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session entitled Multimedia and Islam in the Global South. This session is uh, dealing with the glam movement in Africa, particularly, and we are and we will be showcasing several glam projects in the Global South and in Africa. So I will share with you the program now. Okay. So, okay. So this uh, session is jointly organized by the Wikimedia Heritage User Group, the Wikimedia Ad Library User Group, and Wikipedia Nigeria User Group. So, there will be five parts for this session. The first part is about Wiki World Heritage. It explains the activities that are ongoing by the Wiki World Heritage User Group to digitize World Heritage on Wikimedia projects. Then we will uh, showcase two uh, contests that are ongoing on Wikimedia Commons each year. The first one is with Love, Wiki Loves Heritage that enhances the coverage and quality of intangible African heritage in Wikimedia projects. Then we will be uh, showing the, uh, the winners of Wikilogs Africa contest for 2021. Then Wikimedia Nigeria will show the project about documentation of indigenous languages called the grassroots uh, languages documentation in Nigeria. And then we'll uh, showcase several uh, uh, several projects and efforts related to uh, the use of Wikimedia projects in libraries. Finally, there will be a final discussion to uh, explain how to move forward with Wikimedia and the GLAMS to sustain sustainability in the Global South and to answer questions related to this to the session thank you so to uh, begin i will leave the floor to nasima to present the activities of wiki world heritage the floor is yours thank you hassan Adin. hello everyone and greetings from morocco so i will be going to present the activities of Wiki World Heritage and how through these activities we can uh, contribute in fostering the Wikimedia movement. Uh, can you please share the presentation, Hussein? Okay, I will do that. Thank you. So as I said, this presentation is about fostering Wikimedia movements through World Heritage and how our activities in Wiki World Heritage user group can cont contribute not only in documenting World Heritage, but also in fostering the movements all over the world. Next slide, please. So last year we discovered and were surprised to know that many UNESCO World Heritage sites are still underdocumented in, on Wikimedia projects either on Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, Wikidata, and so on. And also many countries with World Heritage sites have no Wikimedia affiliates. And here is the example from Africa and from Central Asia. Uh, next, please. So we decided to create Wiki World Heritage User Group. But our purpose was not only to document World Heritage, but to go beyond that and to see World Heritage as an opportunity to empower Wikimedians and foster the Wikimedia movement in many countries. And it will be done through three aspects. First of all, World Heritage is a very good opportunity for capacity building for Wikimedians, because simply World Heritage is a very complex topic that includes many aspects and many components. Therefore, a successful documentation of this topic 
requires a good mastery of many Wikimedia projects and tools. Then we have World Heritage as a good catalyzer of dynamics within the movement, because World Heritage is constituted of components of the same nature, for example, cities, archaeological sites, buildings, and these components are found in many countries at the same time. So they can be a good trigger to catalyze collaborations between different Wikimedia affiliates, and also to create collaborations between these Wikimedia affiliates and other powerful and potent organizations such as, such as the UNESCO World Heritage Center, the ECOMOS, and so on. Finally, because World Heritage is found in many countries, even those without Wikimedia affiliates, it is a good occasion to catalyze partnerships in countries without Wikimedia affiliates through collaborating with other NGOs. And when we collaborate with other NGOs, we can create a good occasion for them to learn about Wikimedia movement, to learn about editing in the different projects, and to start the creation of their own Wikimedia community. Next, please. So let's start with capacity building. In order to build the capacity for our members, we uh, first started by uh, doing a, a, a skills assessment through a survey that we sent to all the members in order to know what are their needs, what are the priorities, and what are the projects and the tools that they master in order to create an atmosphere and an environment where Wikimedians learn from each other. And as a result, we have here our capacity building program that you can see, and which targeted many tools on Wikidata, on Wikimedia Commons, and others. And in order to uh, make all the Wikimedians benefit from this capacity building program, we didn't keep it for ourselves, but we tried to uh, share it as, as possible as we can. So uh, our capacity building program is available on Wikimedia Commons, on the meta page of the user group, and also on our uh, YouTube channel to be accessible uh, to Wikimedians and also to people from uh, other backgrounds. Next, please. Another example for creating dynamics within the movement is the thematic project of tall cities. Um, as mentioned earlier, word heritage can be um, repartitioned into uh, many, uh, many groups, uh, buildings, uh, cities, archaeological sites, and so on. So we are working on creating thematic projects that work on world heritage sites of the same nature, but that do belong to different countries at the same time. And Tall Cities is one of them. And from the name, we can deduce that it targets its cities and the urban quarters and towns that are listed by the UNESCO as world heritage. And here we have the example of a very successful collaboration that we had with Wikimedia Tanzania. And I will let my friend uh, Anthony uh, talk about this collaboration and its outcomes. The floor is yours, Anthony. All right, thank you so much, Nasima. Uh, so my name is Anthony Mtabangu. I'm a co-founder of Wikimedia Community User Group Tanzania. And I'll be summarizing some achievements that we have made uh, in collaboration with the Wiki World Heritage. Uh, around March this year, we had the Told Cities 2021 in Tanzania project. This was a new project that we did um, uh, focusing on uh, documented, documenting some buildings that are old, old buildings that are found on Stone Town, that is Zanzibar. Sorry and for interrupting. Like, uh, uh, can you go back to the other slide, please? To the previous one. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Nasima. I can start over. Uh, Again, my name is Anthony Mtavangu from uh, Tanzania, and I'm a co-founder of Wikimedia Community User Group Tanzania. So I'll be summarizing some activities that you have been do doing uh, in Tanzania in terms of uh, GLAM. The first project we did this year, around March 2021, was Told Cities 2021 in Tanzania. This was the project that we aimed at documenting some buildings that are uh, recognized by UNESCO as World Heritage Site. So we had like 24 plus uh, Wikimedians from Tanzania, 10 of them being the photographers, 
and we had to travel to Stone Town of Zanzibar, and uh, we were able to capture like uh, 400 plus photos that depict the um, these buildings that are old and they are yes recognized by uh, recognizable by UNESCO that uh, they are world heritage sites. Then we were able to collaborate with other Wikipedia editors on creating uh, more than 26 articles that were not present on the Swahili Wikipedia, but they were on English Wikipedia. And this was all about uh, the Zanzibar uh, historical buildings. Also, we did collaborate with the Wiki World Heritage user group, as Nasima said. Um, uh, and specifically, we did collaborate with Yemen from Tunisia and, yes, Nasima from Morocco. And we did add some uh, content on Wikidata that was not there uh, as a result of this project. So we are thankful for them for being so supportive. And we are looking forward to do more this project uh, each year to document more areas that are present in Tanzania that are not covered on Wikipedia. So we are inviting other communities that can feel like uh, doing the same project in their, in their communities or collaborate with us to do the same. Then the second project was uh, Wiki Heritage in Danger. As you, you might be knowing already, that due to climatic change in the world, some areas are added to the list that um, is the list of the uh, areas that are in danger. So in Tanzania, we have Nyerere National Park, formerly known as uh, Salus Game Reserve. And this is the area that is in Tanzania listed as one of the areas that are in danger. Um, so we, we were able also between June and July, we did organize some photo hunt to that national park. And we had like uh, 326 plus photos. And uh, uh, these are the photos that are uploaded to Wikimedia Commons for the usage of Wikim uh, to different Wikimedia Foundation projects such as Wikipedia and Wikidata. Yeah, so in short, this is the summary of the glam activities that we did so far in this year from Tanzania. Thank you, and back you to you, Nasima. Thank you so much, Anthony. Uh, and besides Wikimedia Tanzania, we are collaborating with Wikimedia Ivory Coast, and we are, are having a Nedetatan and a photography hint uh, just next week. And we wish to collaborate with more affiliates that have uh, cities in their countries listed as UNESCO World Heritage. Next slide, please. Another project we are working on this year is Wayne Danger. As introduced by Anthony, it is about World Heritage Sites in Danger. And many of these sites are found in countries without Wikimedia affiliates, which makes their documentation very challenging. So what we did is to start searching for partners in these countries and uh, with targeting and having focus on um, heritage in, uh, heritage focused NGOs. And fortunately, we were being able to catalyze partnerships in three challenging contexts, which are Afghanistan, Libya, and Yemen. So this year we are co proudly collaborating with NGOs from these countries. And we are going through an approach uh, that uh, enables capacity building from locals from these countries in order to adopt the project and implement it. So we started by sourcing volunteers. In collaboration and with the help with these local NGOs, we selected volunteers from each country in order to charge them to implement the project activities. Secondly, we started the capacity building program. This month, we are leading a training of trainers program for Libya, Afghanistan, and Yemen in order to equip volunteers with the necessary skills to edit, to explain to others about Wikipedia and Wikimedia Commons, to know more about licensing, about the rules, and also how to organize editathons. And uh, in September, they will organize an editathon, each one in each country, and a photography contest that will finish in October. Next slide, please. And the last thing that we should always remember that GLAM communities uh, such as museums, world heritage professionals, and other heritage activists and professionals are not always or necessarily uh, have the good uh, mastery of new technologies. 
and they are not necessarily aware of how Wikidata works and how Wikipedia works, for example. So we had the idea to make the, um, the, the incredible possibilities offered by Wikidata accessible for these audiences through creating platforms that are user-friendly and that can allow them to use Wikidata queries and Wikidata generated information without being obliged to go through learning the, how to do queries or, or how to uh, learn uh, Sparkle. Uh, so we are uh, working on creation of a, word uh, of a website for Wiki World Heritage that will give access to all the maps, statistics, timelines, and other information related to these sites. Next slide, please. Yeah. And finally, we are working on fostering accessibility to Wiki content also by designing playful experiences that include the content we always produce on Wikimedia projects. And here I'm going to present you the example of Medina Stories, which is a project that targets the documentation of 10 uh, World Heritage sites in the Maghreb region uh, through uh, organizing and editing a photography contest. And when we collected uh, all the content from the editing and photo contest, we created a playful digital application that gives the user um, a virtual visit to these World Heritage sites with always the possibility of reading more on Wikipedia. Next slide, please. Finally, I would like to thank you and to invite every Wikimedia affiliate to reach out to us for collaboration. And here are all our social media platforms uh, that you can follow us on and also our contacts. Thank you. OK, so thank you, Nasima. Well, now we, ha we have to move forward. And so we will uh, move forward to uh, announcing the Wiki Loves Africa winners for 2021 with Ayla. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ayla Hado Flood. I am one of the co organizers of uh, Wiki Loves Africa. I'm just going to share my screen. Give me a second, please. Um, oops. Sorry. Can that be added, please? Oh, it's up. Yes. Okay. Sorry, it is up. <laughs> Hi. Um, this year, um, Wiki Loves Africa is an annual photography event. Uh, and sorry, I'm just trying to get it to go. Right. Let me start again. Hi, I'm Isla Haddo Flood. Uh, we are going to today announce the winners for Wiki Loves Africa 2021. Um, Wiki Loves Africa 2021 took place in between February and April, um, the competition upload time. And the uh, theme this year is was health and wellness. We followed uh, the theme health and wellness because we believe that um, after the last two years with COVID taking a very negative view uh, of people around the world, it was also a good idea to concentrate on something, not only the, the negative, but also to concentrate on the, the, jo the happiness or at least the more positive aspect, which is, is wellness and health and something that people can do daily, but also ascribe to um, and can change. So uh, Wiki Loves Africa is about changing the narrative of um, how Africa is represented online and uh, how Africa is represented both to us and to um, internationally. Um, and so therefore, it's a very powerful medium and representing health and wellness was one way of doing that. We had 8,319 um, people who submitted entries. There were no submit uh, entries that were submitted. There were 1,149 people who entered photographs. 
there were 47 um, images from 47 countries. And there were also a number of events, well, 33, that were held by the Wikimedia user groups across Africa. Um, every year, this is the, the seventh year that we've held Wiki Loves Africa. And every year, the contributors um, are always within 20, the top 20% of people on, uh, um, sorry, over between 75 and 80% of people who contribute to Wiki Loves Africa are entirely new to the Wikimedia movement. Um, and so that's, it's getting, it's a very high contribution rate. Um, and there are, the numbers are coming down every year, which means that more people are re-contributing to the, the competition. So who won this year? This year, um, Erwin van Birken, van Bergek and Quant won with this amazing photograph from, um, of a woman waiting with her son, sitting vigil, waiting with her son at the hospital. And the photographer said this, this image of a mom spending time faithfully sitting next to her son day in, day out, just hit me. She had a certain calm and determination to her. Despite hospital life being hard in West Africa, she envisaged a certain dignity, dignity and hope I could not take my eyes off her. And it is a startlingly heart-wrenching, but also quietly determined image. In the second is a woman who is learning how to um, look at through the microscope. And it's such an image of both uh, the multitasking of women, but also this wonderful image of women um, with a very that's a very very uh, universal form of carrying of carrying babies in Africa. Um, so this is a, a particularly amazing image from Nigeria. Then this is a very cut image. Unfortunately, the way that we have had to um, crop it just for this slide, but it's actually a portrait image of a young girl who is just happily. Um, cleaning her hands. It's a very simple process. It's something that we've all learned how to do very thoroughly over the last two years, but uh, it's beautifully captured and the colors and the smile and the kind of uh, vibrancy. This is from Ghana. Um, Gabriel Joe Amazu is a very well, fairly well-known um, photographer within and supporter within the Wikimedia uh, movement in Ghana. And his reaction to taking this was seeing a little girl washing her hands in this COVID-19 era without anybody telling her to do so just made me understand how determined the girl is to live in this COVID-19 um, pandemic. So it was again a very nice simple image. Then we had a best video, uh, best video category and this was uh, from Cote d'Ivoire uh, last year's winner, Bubakam, Bubakam's um, video compilation was of a um, was of a street. Uh, sorry, was of uh, going into the canals of uh, Abidjan. But in this case, he took somebody's daily routine uh, through the streets of uh, Abidjan, and um, it's a, a, a beautifully shot. In, it's a beautifully shot video. It's a story, it's an entire story, but it also shows um, the daily routine, but it also shows the streets of, of Abidjan too. So it's, and the production quality is excellent. I really um, advise you to go and have a look. For the traditional cultural prize, we chose a, an image from, um, from the sand that represented the sand in uh, in Botswana, and uh, about how dancing and um, and their belief system is very much about being healing and about making people consistently healthy. Um, the first three prizes were judged by a a, a panel of twelve international. Um, uh, photographers and communists. 
And um, the last two that you've seen, the video prize and the cultural prize, were the organizers. We we decided that given the um, the spe specifics of the of the prize category. And the third prize, the last prize, um, has gone to a it's a special collection that came from the Norjadan um, training program that happened within Cameroon. And as you can see, there's a collection of three from three of the three photographers who together went on a um, tour of this hospital. And it's absolutely sensational, the photographs and heartbreaking, but also amazingly professional and the daily representing the daily lives. Florence, I and Ceslas uh, helped to organize, well, organize this year, but we couldn't absolutely could not do it without the help of the many Wikimedians and user groups across the Wiki, Wiki Loves Africa, but also across Africa. It's um, not only established um, user groups, but also people, volunteers from across Africa who are just starting to build their own communities and their own spaces uh, within Africa. So it's it's amazing to see this. We had a, a lovely representation of Africa this year uh, and we're looking forward to doing it next year. And what have we achieved over seven years? We've had never, nearly 72, well, over 72,000 images that have, gone, have been contributed with over 9,000 people from 9,000 people. And these images um, have been viewed in total nearly 780 million times. And this is changing the, the how Africa, the narrative is with, um, with consistent, uh, chain, sorry, consistently uh, having images from Africa being represented on universal subjects and along with um, competitions like Wikipedia pages wanting photos, being able to use our images as well, the collective images. So thank you very much for everyone uh, who takes part. And just to look forward towards the, um, the Wiki Africa Hour that's taking place in early September, and you can meet all the winners there. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. So now we will move to Joy, who will be presenting the Wiki Loves Heritage Contest. Okay. Hello, everyone. It's good to see you from behind. <laughs> and while we're waiting for Hussein, okay, wait. All right. I'm Joy from Ghana. And I'm here to touch on a bit from the Wikilabs folklore team under the institution Open Heritage Foundation. So you can go to the next. Okay, so Open Heritage Foundation is um, a free knowledge advocates group that brings together um, diverse communities to assist with the coverage of tangible and intangible heritage sites onto Wikimedia Commons. But most of the um, projects or campaigns that we run is the Wikilabs folklore and the new addition that's the feminism and folklore. Next, please. Can you please go to the next slide? Okay. So today I'm going to touch a bit on the intangible sites or artifacts that we've been covering through the Wiki Loves Folklore campaign. And as most of us would already know, it's an international photo competition that brings together uh, people from the underrepresented communities as well to share in folklore, tales, cultures, music, anything that has to do with um, folks and their tales, which is captured together and put on Wikimedia Commons. This year, the theme was on um, feminism and folklore, basically to Ghana contributions from um, artists who are females, as well as directors or movie directors or 
tail directors who are females as well. And not just about the tails, but then we also focus on capturing images on museums and heritage sites. Next, please. Okay, so the reason why my focus mainly is based on um, in introducing more of the projects of Wikilabs folklore to Africans is that we've had um, low rates of participation. And if you realize over the past three years, when it started as the Wikilabs Love competition, which sought to um, bring together or capture images or let's say events of love activities, we realized that it was important to also introduce the artifacts and the tales that contribute or constitute constitutes the constitutes to the um, um, tales of of, of 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 the people who run the competition. So for example, when you look at the Philippines, they have so many festivals that has stories behind it. And without this competition, we will not be able to get information about what they do, or we'll not be able to have a visual representation of what is done in their respective countries. Thankfully, we can move to the next slide. Thankfully, we've had good representation from the African groups that started from um, Ghana and Zambia. That was last year, 2020. Please move to the next slide. And now we've had about six institutions or countries participating. So for example, we've had an increase with um, Benin, Kenya, Uganda, Nigeria, and Tanzania participated in this year's competition. Although there has been an increase in communities participating, it's still on the low side, the percentage is not well covered. But the issue is that uh, that um, we realize that there are some groups or institutions that are facing um, challenges with the freedom of panorama. You realize that there are some heritage sites that it's equally impossible for them to capture these images because there is no freedom of panorama, which we are trying as much as possible to introduce certain measures where communities or countries who are interested in participating in Wikilabs folklore would be able to discuss it with their respective governments to release or give them the free way to capture these images. Like Ayla said, some of these competition or photo contests helps us to have a good representation of the images on Wikipedia articles that do not have images describing or giving meaning to what the article talks about. And I'm excited to share that at least this year, we've had, um, as part of uh, announcements yet to be made, we've had one person from, one contributor from Nigeria who shared an amazing audio, which captures a dance in the Hausa language for the very first time. Next. So as I was saying earlier on, we need to encourage more advocacy. We would want to have more, an increase in participation from the African communities. There are some toolkits and resources that we have that we would share. And also um, we have some list of heritage sites and folklore activities that we would make available to anyone who'd be interested to join the campaign. And before next year comes, we also want to encourage you to start documenting images of festivals, videos of festivals that are already taking place in your respective countries. Next, I think I'm... Okay, so... Basically, that's it. So just like any other Wikilabs folklore or Wikilabs project that happens or runs in the Wikimedia Foundation, it would be great to have you all on board to support the initiative. Thank you. Thank you. So now we will move to Olishola, who will be presenting the grassroots project.
Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for this um, amazing event. I am so glad to be here. I'll be talking about um, documenting language oral history. But it seems I, 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 am not, I can't see the slide. I'll share it now. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll be talking about um, the Nigeria language oral history. My name is Olanio Olushola. I'm the president of the Wikimedia User Group Nigeria. Thank you, I can say this slide right now. So I'm the president of the Wikimedia, uh, Wikimedia User Group Nigeria, and also the chair of the board of trustee, the Wikimedia Nigerian Foundation, Inc. So, there are basic highlights of this presentation. Um, one of them is, we would like to share with you all one out of the 50 uh, documented oral history with you so that you can enjoy the richness of our language. And also we're gonna have a focus on the project focuses. And um, we're also gonna look at um, endangered language and the classification system by the unesco and lastly we're quickly going to look at um, the some of the step-by-step -step documentation process of documenting a language oral history please next next slide please the next slide is going to show us just less than two minutes video of uh, uh one of the one, one of our um videos i don't know if that is playing kindly watch back i'm um, sit back and watch the video okay and if we are unable to watch the video, I may have to go to the next slide. Okay. The Nigeria Language Oral History is an initiative by the Wikimedia Nigerian Foundation, Inc., with support from the Wikimedia Foundation for enriching the Wikimedia project with freely licensed audiovisuals, files, documentings, spoken languages, and dialects in Nigeria. Next slide, please. So there are key focuses of the, of the project. So the first project, the, the, the first challenge we have is that um, there are quite a number of languages in Africa that are only spoken but are not written. So we feel it is important for us to start from somewhere by documenting the oral history of some of this language. So our plan is to freely document the brief oral history of indigenous languages in Nigeria in a format that is easily accessible and searchable. Two, we also, we also plan to promote the use of indigenous languages, audiovisuals on relevant Wikipedia articles. We also plan to bridge content gap on Wikimedia projects by creating awareness and also promoting content around indigenous languages on Wikipedia. And lastly, the, the project focused on how to promote GLAM. If you look vividly in Africa, one of the key problems we're having is lack of focus on GLAM. So we think that this project is actually going to spur quite a number of affiliate into action by starting with this. And I think it's beginning to take shape. Can we go to the next slide, please?
this picture is looking at endangered languages with a focus on Australia. And this is um, photo is credited to United, uh, UNESCO. We have over 108 um, languages in um, Australia with um, like 13 definitely endangered. We have uh, also 10 uh, severely endangered. This shows the extent at which languages are actually going into extinction. And the United, um, United Nations, through the, 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 the DG, also mentioned that um, every day, at least two languages is bound to slide into extinction. So it is quite important from the side of Africa and globally to begin to look at how best we can preserve and digitize our languages. So with, with this experience from Australia and come other things that is happening across the globe, we could see that it is quite important for us to take an urgent step in preserving our languages. Next step, please. Next slide, please. So um, there's a classification systems of endangered languages by UNESCO. Uh, we have languages that are vulnerable. We have some that are definitely endangered. We have the severely endangered, and we have the critically endangered and the extinct. So for vulnerable languages are those languages where um, most children speak the language, but may be restricted to certain domain. This is an example of what is happening in most of, um, well, I would say in Nigeria, where, uh, where I came from, you see, children only speak in a particular language within their domain, but they don't speak it outside. Then the second one is a definitely endangered. The children no longer learn the language as a mother tongue and rather than in the home. And that is actually happening um, everywhere at the moment. Then the severely endangered languages are the ones spoken by the grandparent and other generation, while the, while, while the, gener the, 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 the parent generation may consider it they do not speak it to children or among themselves. Uh, this is a typical example of most of the indigenous languages in Africa. And we have the critically endangered and those that has gone into extinct. So we, let's go to the next slide, please. Then this, this slide is going to give us a case study whereby we have a look at the Nigeria language oral history documentation. I think I have the pie in the case for you to eat. <laughs> Let's go to the next slide, please. So what are the problems that we plan to solve? At the beginning of the initiation of this project, we observed that less than 10% of the indigenous languages and dialects were covered on, on Wiki. So this is a major content gap. And we feel that starting with this type of project will help to bridge this gap. Then the second problem is that most of the problems that we found in the A above as a result of lack of no communal, lack of no communal engagement or activities to promote identified languages on Wikipedia. So if you look at some of the languages we have, well, I would say more of Africa. Um, some, some, somewhere yesterday, Someone said that it seems African languages are not really important. And why? Because people don't actually use photos on African languages. Why? Because many of them, many of the speakers or many of the indigen can't even speak the language. So when you can't speak it, it's difficult for you actually to contribute to it. And when the indigenous can't really speak the language, then it's more of a big problem. So this is a major problem. There are no communal engagements. Then the last one is there is no digital archive, archiver of the identified languages under open licenses. So this project is also is actually uh, projected to ensure that this documentation are freely open and accessible for education and for research purpose. Next, please. Solutions. The first solutions 
that we brought to the table is for us to one create a catalog of some of these um likely endangered languages or probably the indigenous languages then afterwards we also try to identify communities that are uh, relevant to these languages then the third the second thing we did in providing solution is the research so we we, we, we look at within the Wikimedia movement, who are those people, or organizations, or individuals that are currently working on this project, or perhaps have worked in the past, or they are planning to work in the future. So we were able to get in touch to contact uh, Wikitong, and, uh, and their contribution is, has been quite um, uh, impressive in this. Then the next thing is to meet with the stakeholders. We discuss with the stakeholders to know some of their challenges, how we can help, and what have been their challenges, how they can really help. So there are quite a lot of things that have gone into this. So I've discussed about designing the catalogs. They also dis define the scope, which is quite important. How many languages do you think you can document? How do you want to document? Who are the professionals that needed to be brought into space? So those are some of the things that were taken into consideration on this line. Then. The other one is to define, discuss your idea with potential donors or funding agencies. So since many of us do not really, really have the funding, so it's most important for us to look for funding by talking to major donors. We talk to the Wikimedia Foundation that were the eventual uh, funding, I mean, sponsors of the project. Then we, do, we have to look at how to draft your proposal and getting something done. It is also important to have a landing page that will showcase some of the um, some of those things that you plan to do, your success story, your measure of success, what you have done so far, and what next will be done. Then, second but the last is, you need to look at the recruitment of the project team. This type of a project is more of a professional work than just, that can just be given to anyone. So it, it was quite important. And one of the success of this project is that we, we had to engage one of the best a uh, documentary producer in Nigeria to document the video so that we can get a very quality videos and a very quality uh, and, and a very quality video. Then the last thing is community engagement. While it is important for us to have the videos, to have the content, the audio visual, it is also important for us to have them used on Wikipedia and different languages. And that is also part of what we do. We work with the Yoruba Wikimedia User Group Nigeria. And then going forward, we're planning to work with other languages in Nigeria to be sure that people make use of some of these languages and they are properly documented. Next stage, please. Outcomes, the first half of the project. This project is ongoing, so we can only present what we have gotten uh, at this point, which is the first half of the project. We've been able to produce oral history of 50 indigenous languages for research and education purposes. We have also uploaded on commons these languages. And um, by first week in October, the first batch of these languages will be archived on US Library of Congress. And uh, lastly, the contest has been used on over 90 related Wikipedia pages. And that is quite awesome and large. And uh, I, I can tell you, by the second half of this project, we are looking at going to over 500. Next stage, please. So if you'd like to learn more about this project, you can click on this. And I've also shared on the Etopad for you to check uh, some of the metrics what we have done, what we are yet to do, the learning patterns, and quite a lot of things about the project that could be found on the landing page. Um, next slide, please. Well, as you sit back, listen, and watch, I really want to thank you. I have my colleagues here. Isaac um, is also part of the project team. I wouldn't know if Isaac would like to say hi to others if you have time. Still have time, some time left, please. Thank, Thank you very much, Mr. Ishaya. Shola Olaniyo, and everyone present here. Actually, said it all, and um, he was the project manager for that project. And um, I want to say uh, congratulations to you, Mr. Shola Olaniyo, uh, for a job well done on that project. 
uh, as you rightfully mentioned, it's an ongoing project, and uh, we're looking forward to complete it before uh, September, and uh, we will share the final outcome with the entire community when it's, it's ready. So, without wasting much of our time, so I would like to say thank you to everyone for, you know, attending this section and for listening to that uh, brilliant presentation from uh, Olushola. Thank you. Thank you. So now we will move to uh, Clifford, who will be presenting the. Uh, something about the use of libraries in Wikimedia project. All right, thank you so much. And uh, thank you, uh, Hussein Medini, for the invitation to serve in this panel. And, and thank you to the fellow panelists. Uh, I've been learning so much so far. And uh, uh, will you share my slides, please? Uh, Lisa Medini, can you share the slides? Okay, I will share. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, so I'll just get started because I know our time is running short, but uh, in, in just a few minutes, I want to talk about uh, the Wikimedia and Librarians User Group, of which uh, Lisa Medini and I are a part, and some of the initiatives that uh, we're undertaking to uh, foster connections between librarians worldwide. Uh, so the, the Wikimedia and, use, uh, and Libraries User Group brings together uh, librarians, uh, information professionals, uh, workers from other allied sectors with Wikipedians to serve the common cause of sharing reliable knowledge. And among other activities, uh, the members of this user group supports uh, international campaigns like One Lib, One Ref, and also seek to learn and to pass along information from successful library outreach programs uh, in, in one region of the world so that they can be replicated in other regions. The steering committee of the user group comes from around the world, uh, from uh, New York, California, Tennessee, where I am, the United Kingdom, Israel, uh, Tunisia, Nigeria, Goa, uh, and Queensland, Australia. And the membership of, of the group numbers 329 at present, representing uh, librarians and information professionals and other interested parties uh, from Buenos Aires to Cape Town and beyond. A recurring theme of the user group meetings is how we can generate uh, and foster greater connections between wiki librarians, in particular, how may we strengthen ties between librarians in the global south and the global north? And in what follows, I highlight a few of the ways very quickly that we're trying to enhance those transnational relationships. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that we're thinking about a lot is scholarly communications. And for those of you not familiar with the lingo, scholarly communications is about removing the barriers to sharing and exchanging scholarly research, whether in the form of articles, data, clinical trials, or whatever else, with academics as well as the general public. And the potential application of Wikimedia projects to foster scholarly communications has become a focal interest for many Wiki librarians. And here we're indebted to the work of uh, Mary Lace Lamus Royas, the Open Knowledge Librarian and her colleagues at the Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis University Library, uh, because uh, she really spearheaded this effort to uh, think about Wikidata and Wikisite for scholarly communications. One of the things that we're trying to do at Vanderbilt, and you can see this Project Vandy site, is to think about how we can develop a kind of open knowledge platform based on uh, the Wikimedia infrastructure that will replicate a lot of what you would have to buy otherwise from commercial providers. And that would be things like scholarly profiles, being able to do bibliometrics, uh, thinking about institutional repositories, as well as measures of scholarly impact. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Another project that we've undertaken is, uh, and this was mentioned earlier, you know, to help uh, Wikimedians and, and, and Wiki librarians uh, learn how to use Wikidata for this type of purpose. So uh, my colleagues and I uh, had a, a Wikisite grant that we got uh, in 2020, and uh, we developed this tool called uh, Wikisite for Librarians. Uh, it's up online, and I'll put it into the Ethernet afterwards uh, at www.learnwikidata.net. But what I think is really uh, fun about this is we, we did this, uh, this little robot, uh, so we didn't sort of privilege uh, any one uh, particular culture or region. Uh, we had videos that are in this interactive learning pathways, and we've done them in four languages now. So we, we've done them in English, uh, French, um, then Spanish, and also Chinese. And uh, so what we learned through that is that you, you simply can't uh, do dubbing or you know, uh, subtitling if you want to actually do these type of introductions, you need to contextualize them. I mean, that's an obvious takeaway. But uh, when we did uh, these 
pathways, we drew from those regions for, for example, the articles that we talked about or how to, um, you know, the, the, the different monographs and libraries we wanted to describe. Uh, it was all contextualized. Last slide, please. And another thing that th this is very practical and we've just started doing this. Uh, this is a, it's a little bit embarrassing, a, a video, uh, uh, image of me uh, with uh, Miley Joseph, a public librarian in Brisbane, Queensland. And we're trying to encourage a program of what we call uh, Wiki Pen Pals. The idea is that we would have these short exchanges that we would record, and then we would share them online uh, and uh, sort of just connect one-on-one -on -one with a librarian from a different region of the world and share each other's stories about how we're engaged in Wikimedia projects. So if anyone is interested in that, uh, please uh, get in touch. And just a, a final thought, which concerns language. You know, I'm speaking very fast here and uh, I'm sorry because I, I want to get everything in, but I also recognize that one of the greatest barriers we have is just a kind of a privileging of the English language. And so we continue to, th to think about how to do that with both within our user group, but also I think there's a lot of thought on that in Wikimedia projects in general. And I will say that Husmadini and I uh, uh, virtually attended the Grammatical Framework Summer School in Singapore this summer uh, and it was a wonderful opportunity to think with others who are uh, looking at ways to translate between languages automatically and, and make Wikimedia more accessible to others. Uh, so I'm going to stop there in the interest of time and cede it back to you, Husmadini, and thank you so much for your attention. I will just share my screen again. Okay. Well, okay. So I will talk briefly about how to use li li Wikimedia resources to enhance library catalogs and open catalogs about glands in the global south. First, you have the categories in Wikipedia and in other projects that can be uh, controlled keywords to annotate catalogs. Second thing, you have two softwares that are running uh, the Wikimedia projects, MediaWiki, Semantic Wiki, Wiki, or Wikibase that is running Wikidata. So you can use it and build your own database. Third, you can do some topic modeling and some analysis of the text of Wikipedia articles and use that for the augmentation of the regular labelings. And finally, there are Python bots, user scripts, Lua models that can be used for creating library information systems thank you so think about that and that's what i have to say so now i will be moving forward to alice who will be talking about a little bit about uh about her project. wikipedia and african libraries yeah so yep. the floor is yours Thank you very much, Usamadin. Uh, Wagwan, everybody, welcome to the session. If I am cut off, I have a table in the community village. Usamadin, please share my slides as I talk about the Wikipedia in African Libraries project, which is a result of a partnership between AFLIA and the Wikimedia Foundation. And we are using our revised OCLC curriculum. Are you able to share the slides? Yes, and we're using the revised OCLC curriculum. And how this came about is um, AFLIA is a continental body that unites African library associations and institutions, and they have a network that is spread over 30 countries. And out of these 30 countries, we have English speakers, French speakers, and Portuguese speakers. And when we ran a survey, we found out that, uh, this is the third slide, second or third, we found out that, um, yes, uh, from over 330 P, uh, respondents, uh, over 54% were not aware that there were any user groups in their countries, but 65% had experience with online learning, so the course is delivered virtually, and then a big number spoke English, so a big number of the participants we have so far speak English, some French, the Portuguese, 
I do not know what happened to them. And there were also more female than male uh, respondents, and there are more female than male students. And this addresses the gender gap as well as the age issue because uh, most of them are between 31 and 50 years old. Next slide, please. So how did we do this? Uh, we got the original curriculum, the original OCLC curriculum, and then we customized and expanded it to include five core sections that address information literacy and librarians get to know why they should be engaging with the resource that is Wikipedia. And then we look at Wikipedia editing. And because not everybody is good at editing, we also look at community engagement because very many of them are in positions where they can leverage their influence to make things work. And then we also expanded the curriculum to acknowledge and address community realities, specifically local language and offline access, especially with this epileptic internet and electricity supply. And the course is delivered virtually in both English and French and to foster community connections because over 50% say they did not know they had user groups in their communities. We enlist the experience, sorry, we enlist experienced African Wikimedians. Uh, there are very many practicing Wikimedians who are also librarians, and they are able to share their experiences depending on the theme of the day, share the community campaigns that they are working on, and just their presence alone is able to motivate participants. Next, please. So right now, I can confidently say that as a collective, we are able to organize and participate in global campaigns. And we have our flagship African Librarians Week every May, so look out for it. And we have also been able to get resource persons in areas that have no affiliates. And uh, what comes to mind right now is Zambia, Namibia, and Zimbabwe, but there are other uh, communities. There are deeper working relationships with user groups that we thought we'd never reach out to. Benin comes to mind, but then there's also increased confidence with the individuals who have been in this course, and they also participate a lot in their local communities, and they have been able to submit plans of engagement, community engagement at the end of the course, and a number of these have actually been sponsored through a rapid grant by the Wikimedia Foundation. Next and last. So, <laughs> yeah, proving it is really not provoking you, but we do have some numbers to speak to the success of this engagement. We have trained four batches of students so far, 524 students have been enrolled and we've called uh we've been able to create 619 articles some of them are on wikidata french wikipedia and english wikipedia we have 2279 images of specifically African information institutions that have been contributed. So perhaps, Ayla, this is something we should be talking about. And then also we've made Wikipedia a much better place by adding that number of references that you see. Next, please. <laughs> So thank you very much. Uh, that is the Wikipedia in African Libraries project. Uh, if you look for us, uh, our official hashtag is hashtag WikiAflibs. And I thank everybody on this panel because everybody on this panel has been part of that campaign. Some have been guest speakers, some have volunteered their expertise, some have told me to be in this forum, some have really broken their backs for me to be in this forum. So thank you very much, Sumedin. Back to you. Thank you. So I can me will speak with for one minute or or something uh, about okay. the wiki one one ref. Okay. Um... Hello, everyone. Um, we're running out of time. So even if the presentation is not coming on board, I'll just quickly wrap it up. Uh, my name is Ayakomi, and um, I'm a member of the Wiki and Library User Group. I mean, I'm a member of the Steering Committee of the User Group as well, and also from Nigeria. So basically, I just want to probably just talk about campaigns and how we can use campaigns to be able to 
launch into the grassroots to be able to get more people involved with the community project. And I'm quickly, I'm just going to uh, make an emphasis on using the tool that we have, especially for professionals. So quickly, please, next slide. So why do we have to use campaign most times, you know? Um, reference campaign actually when it has to do with professionals it allows more professionals get involved it makes contribution works right because while you're doing the campaign you're making it much more easy for people to be able to access the project you're making it look fun you're making it look entertaining and the truth is when it comes to referencing when it comes to having a wikipedia a quality wikipedia article what's a what a wikipedia article without reference so it's important to launch this campaign so quickly let's move i'm trying to wrap up Okay, so easy way for reference campaign. Now we have the, the beautiful project called One Liberal Rep, and I'm sure a lot of us know about it already. So it's it, it, it's just saying, imagine a world where every librarian had one more reference to Wikipedia. So imagine a world where every Wikipedian had at least one reference to Wikipedia article. So this is an example of a campaign that you can use to, that, that, that we use, we've adopted, and, and also can work to, able to enter into the grassroots, to talk to librarians, to talk to people, get them involved with the project. And this is something over time that we've done over the years, especially from my own country, Nigeria, that I've been able to bring in a lot of professional Australian librarians into the project. So talking about one library, uh, move on, moving on. So one library, like it's it's it, it's a project of the Wikipedia Library. Um, the, the, the 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 essence of the Wikipedia Library aims to access the use of source of free, easy, collaborative, and efficient information. It's run by a team of the Wikipedia Foundation staff and paper volunteers. So now let's move to the tool of the one library. Please, Jose. Please, next slide. Now we have the important tool called citation on. Now citation on um, it's the tool being used for the one library one campaign. So what that means that. So what that means that uh, what that means that it allows us to be able to add citations to each Wikipedia article, and this tool has been proven very very important to use in Wikipedia project because when you get involved, people get to add content, they get to add citations into Wikipedia article, and it allows them to enter into the grassroots of various Wikipedia projects, as the case may be. Please next slide, please. I'm trying to wrap up. Next slide. Now. It's not for previous campaign. I'm using Nigeria as a case study now. Using this one live one ref campaign, it has produced a whole lot of results. Using this one live one ref campaign has been able to allow the user group here in Nigeria to be able to, you know, have partnerships with more than five various um, libraries here in Nigeria. We've been able to train more than 500 librarians in the hearts of Edith Wikipedia. We've been able to have partnership with school institutions. So really, it's important. So using this kind of campaign.